hello, hello everyone and welcome back to the Junaid Lewis story. Last week we spoke about, I have my children and we're very close-knit, myself and my children. But all the family members, I don't let them in because of mistrust. And that's something that happened. I, I have to learn how to start trusting people back again. At this time in my life, maybe not right now for everybody I can bring back in my life. But gradually I have to start bringing family members and people back in my life. And now this week, I want to get into something a little bit more fun. I want to talk about why I wear wigs and why I'm not in a relationship right now. Let me say thank you to my sponsor, Vifoli. Um, Vifoli is a fantastic product. I use it on my face for protection and moisturizing during the day, the day cream and the night cream for rejuvenation and restoration on my skin. So thank you so much, Vifoli. Anyway, back to the story. For those of you who have not subscribed to my channel, please do and hit that bell so that you can always be updated as when new things are coming out. Today I'm talking about why I wear wigs and why I'm not in a relationship and to clear up some myths and stuff about myself as well. So all right, why I wear wigs? So years ago, um, this is probably about 15 years ago that I started wearing the wigs. It used to be that I used to wear my hair natural and just straighten is how I used to do. Then I moved on to doing tracks, putting tracks in the hair. So I was going with a friend to a um, manufacturer who was making some perfume for her. And as soon as I entered into the door with those tracks and my long nails, the woman said to me, are you wearing a wig or tracks? And I told her I was wearing tracks. And she said, take that out of your hair. And basically she told me that the glue in the in the wig, in the glue tracks um, were poisonous for my head and that the nails at that time, I don't know what they're being made of today, was made of formaldehyde, the material to make the nails. I don't think gel is made of that, but I think the regular ones. So I, I haven't worn nails in a long time, so I don't know what they're doing now. But anyway, that's the reason that I stopped. So I decided at that point that I was going to wear uh, wigs instead. So I cut all the hair off. I let it grow natural and um, so from that and one of the things I want to share if somebody is wearing natural hair trust me if they're wearing it for over two three years four five years as long as I've been wearing it and it's natural hair and all they do is braid it and put it underneath there the hair is actually very long my hair is actually a very lengthy decent size I had to cut it one time because I'd stayed too long without rebraiding it and it got matty and I cut it but for the past um, it's been about five six years now since it's grown back and it's grown out very very lengthy and I'll show you this video in terms of what's happening so this is me and I'm getting my hair washed and of course I'm um, getting it blow out and that's the length and that was two years ago that the hair looked that length and then now I know it's going at least about six inches longer so my hair is very long underneath here guys and this is me at uh, two years ago in my um, my my natural hair look when I did it a couple of times. And I'll tell you a couple of the reasons now that I don't do the natural look. I have become very complacent. It's easy for me to put on a wig, braid the hair and put on a wig. I, I have short ones, long ones, medium light size ones, all the different ones that you can think about. And for that particular reason, it's easy for me to wear. So um, that's why I wear wigs. It's a matter of convenience for me, not because I don't have hair. I wear it because now I'm totally, totally, it's convenience. But I know a lot of times I hear men go, oh, I don't like women that wear wigs. But they date a woman with fake boobs and fake butt and all of that stuff. So, <laughs> so I don't know what's the difference. And one of the things I want to say to you, and I say this all the time, I don't drink, smoke, or do drugs, but there's a lot of other issues that things that I have. I don't have tattoos on my skin, no part of my body. The only hole that I have in my ear is this hole that when I was born, they put in my ear. I don't do all of those things, but wigs I wear. And if you have any of those things and any other thing else, whether it's something you have fake contacts, false eyelash, anything you do to alter yourself at any time, please don't talk about somebody else. That's just a piece. And that's just something I'm sharing because I've heard it all. But I still love me and I love wearing my wigs. But that's why I wear my wigs, all right? 
So, coming back now to why I am not dating. Now, for those of you who knew um, or have known that my husband has passed, if you've been watching this, you know my husband's passed. But after he passed, and I'll go back and tell you something later on, but after he passed, everyone was saying, well, are you going to start dating? Are you going to start dating? And it was a challenge for me because I know most of the people don't realize that even though my husband and I didn't live in the same state and I might have been angry about him and said stuff when I was angry, I still love that man. I have known him since I was nine years of age, started dating him when I was 15, and I'd known him all my life. I have three children for the man. I do have some feelings for him. There's a reason why I didn't divorce him in all the time that he was gone because I truly did have feelings for him. So for that particular reason, I know that some people go, oh my God, I don't believe that she still cared about him. When my husband died, I experienced something that I wish upon no woman. Only people that call me were the people who were interested to find out my business so that they can gossip. I'm sorry if you were one of the people that did it, but that's how I felt. And I gave people what it is because at that time I needed to talk and they, nobody called me back. And a few, let me take that back. There were a few family members that were genuinely interested and concerned about me. But most people called to ask that I have insurance on him, which was one of the most painful things that happened. And you know what? I've already forgiven you for it, so I'm just talking about it. I'm not going to call names. But they called to find, do you have insurance? And mainly when people do things like that, you know when somebody dies, one of the things I never ask is if people have insurance. That's your business, whether or not you have insurance. If there's something I can do to help you, and I know a lot of times people do it because it's the thing people ask, well, is she going to be okay? That's what they want to know. Is she going to have some money now? That's what it, but most of the time they come from a, a place of gossip. But I want to say that it, it was a difficult time for me after my husband had passed, given the news that I had found out, and I'll get to that, I promise you guys, after he had passed. I mean, that really struck me really hard because I'd known things about my husband before, like he had had a child that he left here. I told you out of the marriage. But the stuff that I found out about my husband after he died really, really took me for, for, for a hit. But anyway, I'm not going to get into that now. But um, he's passing, he's gone. I want you to know I've forgiven him already. And so when I speak, I'm speaking from a place of what happened to me and what I experienced. Not that, oh, I'm holding malice against him. I already forgive my husband and forgive the situation and circumstances. But anyway, that messed me up on a mental level. I'm going to tell you that. So trust was one of the things that happened and I want to say, don't think that men don't approach me. When you're somebody like myself who is on social media, any woman, I don't care if it's me or any, any woman, or even man, I guess too. But if you're out on social media and you're there in a constant level, and you're, especially when you're out and you're, you're, you're what, somebody that's speaking and everybody's noticing you, trust me. Men approach me like you will not believe. So it's not for the lack of a man not approaching me that I don't have a man. One of the things I told myself after my husband passed, the next relationship I get into should be something that I am happy with. And now, let me tell you, I don't have no long list. He had to have this, 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 and this. Some decency the man has to have about him. And he doesn't have to have a, a whole heap of money. But one of the things I'm looking for is ambition. I don't care if you have a degree, you don't have a degree. If now you're working in a job, if you have ambition and keyword, single. Because I get a lot of them that are asking me questions. But these are married men. Shame on you guys. By the way, I'm not going to call you a baby. You know who you are. But anyway, and then I get the phony baloney ones. Now, I don't know who put it out there that I'm looking for a white man from another country that wears a military uniform or is in the military. I have no idea who put that out there. But the amount of phony baloney nonsense that I get of these men, oh, they're from London, they're from here, and they're dressed in a sailor's outfit or a military outfit. Please stop. I have a long list of people that I've blocked from my page because of that nonsense. And as soon as I recognize them, I block them. As soon as I realize that you're coming for me for some other stupidness, I'm going to put it this way. If it is that I am not on a dating site and I did not meet you on a dating site, don't waste your time. I'm not interested. And it's not that you can't meet somebody that way, but most of the time my antennas is up and I'm like, hmm, okay. 
I'm going to search your page. I'm going to see what you're about. And if I see you're about nothing, it's not going anywhere. But I'm still looking for somebody. So let me share real fast about my situation. So everybody know about two years ago, a year and a half, two years ago, I put it out there that I wanted to date. And I had joined um, a dating site and was looking for somebody. Now I must say the first man, first man ever to approach me and I looked at, that guy, him and I went out. We hit it off right away and we went out on our first date. And when I say date, date is really date. Date is not nobody coming over. They don't know where I live. We meet at a, a separate spot. They don't even have my telephone number. All we do is communicate through social media and that's how I do it. So it's really a date. We're meeting for coffee and we're figuring out whether or not we're interested in moving forward. So this first guy that I met, very nice man, um, had two children and that was fine. They were, he was grown, he was older than I was, which is what I'm looking for. I'm not looking for anybody younger than me. I'm not a cougar. My daughter says I always get that word wrong, but you guys know what I mean. I'm not a cougar, cougar, whichever one it is. I'm not one of those not interested in, not a long shot in a man that's younger than me. I don't take anything away from a man that's younger than me, but I feel, for me, I feel more comfortable with somebody that's older than I am. Now, must be at least healthy and physically fit. Because in today's society, my age, I, I do very well physically for my age. And so I don't mind somebody that's 10 years, 15 years, even 20 years older than I am. As long as they're physically fit and they're keeping themselves well, right? Anyway, long story, back to it. So, um... Uh, we went out on our date. We met at the coffee shop. We realized that we did like each other after we had our conversation. So he asked me on a second date. Went on that second date and went out to a beautiful restaurant. He was such a gentleman. I, even when I was going to park, he offered that I valet park my car. Even though he wasn't there, he said valet park. Basically, he was going to take care of the valet parking. And I, I didn't want to do that. I said, it's okay. I just parked my car and um, I went in. But anyway, we had a wonderful date, wonderful time. Afterwards, he was such a gentleman. He walked me to my car. And even though, you know, we had a nice conversation, didn't try to kiss, didn't try to do anything. And I was so happy about that because I was uncomfortable since I had not been in a relationship for a long time, just jumping into something with someone. Anyway, we started talking on the phone and we decided that we're going to take the relationship to another level. Well, he had told me when we first met that he did have a fiance that was living with him and that he was, the fiance moved out for, you know, their own personal reasons, what happened with them. Anyway, during this time when we made this decision, okay, we're going to start dating each other, we made the decision. And he said, you know, I've got to clear up a few things with you. My fiance still collects her mails from me because she hasn't been gone that long. And by the way, she has a dog and I take care of the dog for her, meaning that she can't take care of the dog at her place, and so he still takes care of the dog. Like he washes the dog and he goes to get the dog and she come bring the dog, whichever way. I'm gonna tell you, I was not ready. I was out of a relationship for too long for me to settle and walk into a thing where somebody still has tides with somebody that they were with before. I was not comfortable. He was a nice guy, but I had to let that go because of that. So another one, um, this young man, and I'm just giving you a quick spree on the people that I was in. Another man that I was interested in, his thing was calling and asking to take off. I He takes off his shirt and we go take a shirt. I don't even know this man. He lives in the way in other states. So yeah, that was the things I encountered people. And the one thing I wanna tell you guys, this one particular one that really, and I haven't dated since. This man told me he was six foot, at least that's what he had on the dating site, that he was six feet tall. Why would a man lie about his height? I don't know. It makes no logical sense to me. When you meet that person, what are you going to do? That's not something that if you're drastically different in height from what you said, it makes no sense. Anyway, when I, I, I am 5'4", and I, I wear a lot of heels, so I think my, my heels that day might have been like about five inches. So I was probably about 5'9 that day. I was looking down at this man who said he was six feet tall. When I tell you that upset me, that upset me. So anyway, so for those particular things, I, um, so I've had now at least about four dates that I've went on that 
didn't work out. And they were just dates, just as I said, people I met for coffee. The longest situation was the first one where him and I went on a second date. Everybody else, first, first date, I'm like, no, I'm out. And I'm out because of stupid lies that people tell. And I've taught myself that if that, the first date and you're lying and you're telling lies, that means you're gonna lie throughout the relationship and I'm not settling for that. So lying is the key thing for me. Don't lie. If something, I, I appreciate you telling me what it is and giving me an explanation, that's different. But don't lie about your height and lie about stupid things. Anyway, so anyway, so that's why I am not dating. I decided to take myself off of the dating site for a while and let me just go through this phase that I'm going through and let that be it. All right. So that's it. So anyway, I want to clear up some myths. And when I say myths, like for example, um, things I wish I would have said something about before. So the first one I want to say, let me go back and say this. Um, I was probably about 21. I just got married anyway. And I went out to a party with my cousin and her boyfriend. And I guess he wanted to make her jealous. He did something that I should have addressed right then and there with him. And I should have spoken to her about it, but I never did. Being young and sometimes you don't think of doing things. I felt embarrassed for her and I was like, ah. So she went to the bathroom. When she was coming back, he decided to plant a kiss on my cheek. And I just left it alone and I didn't say anything. And I think she walked away with the perception that I was doing something with her boyfriend. I want to say cousin dad is not true. And I don't know if he ever explained it to you, but I should have explained it to you. That is not true. Never did anything. I'm not going admit, I've never been in a relationship with anybody in my family's boyfriend or husband. That rumor had been put out there about me and that is not true. I tell you the honest to God. God knows, right? And the people, they can ask them, they know. Anyway, as well as um, the other rumor and myths about me is me being in several relationships. So let me explain. One of the kryptonites to me, as I said, I don't drink, smoke, or do drugs. But a kryptonite for me is music, reggae music, calypso music, I guess maybe rap and other things like that. Anything that's fast-paced, I have no idea. And I don't need liquor when those music are on, it's as if I become a different person. I heard Beyonce say when she gets on stage, she's a different person. When I tell you if I'm a place and good music is playing, man, I dance and I just dance to whatever it is I'm feeling to dance and how I feel like dancing at that time. So yes, I have been on dance floors with people and I've danced very provocative. Now, let me tell you, not only were the people in the audience watching me wrong about my relationship, the person I danced with, I've had a few situations where I danced so provocative with somebody that they swear to God something was happening afterwards. And when I told them, no, I was just dancing. They're like, what? Why were you dancing with me like that? I've had that happen to me two times, plain out. So um, if you've seen me in a party and I was dancing with somebody, I can tell you right now, nothing happened. It was just me dancing provocatively. And why? And let me tell you, when I get home after these things, I go, why did I do that? But it's as if the music intoxicates me. I can't explain that one. That particular one, I don't know who I was before in my, in my previous life. If there is such a thing as a previous life, I am a Christian, I believe in God. But my point is, I don't know what it is. That's my thing. I become so obsessed as they say kryptonite you put on the right music and boom 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 boom, boom. And, I, and I get on that floor and I start dancing and whoever it is and the thing is with me my friends have been out to parties with them they go like oh he's too ugly he's too this I don't care what you look like all I want to do is dance I've learned now that I start explaining to people hey I dance a little provocative depending on the music, but there's nothing going to happen. I've learned to explain that to people now and say, hey, there's nothing going to happen. This is just a dance. And then another situation was, and this is just, this one was a flat out lie, like not even a miscommunication, this situation. And again, I've forgiven this person. So please do understand I have forgiven everyone that I'm talking about in this situation. I'm just speaking about the situation. Okay. Anyway, a um, family member of mine, I don't know what was wrong with this person, but they decided to put out a rumor, and it wasn't a rumor, they basically told people that my husband had went to jail and my children had gotten taken away from me. That was not true. Never. My husband was in the Middle East, he was in Kuwait, 
and my children never got taken away from me. Never got taken away from me. I remember we had a, um, my brother was living with me at the time and his daughter had moved from Maryland and a social worker had to come in to uh, speak to his daughter because they had to make sure that everything was fine with her. That's the only time a social worker was ever at my house because I had somebody living there and they had to come to check up on them. My children never had a caseworker, never had a social worker, never was a, my children were an ROTC. My children excel and did well at school. And that's not a boast. That's just to clarify what somebody said. So I just want to put that out there and clarify that, right? So again, I've forgiven for it, so it's not a big deal, but I just want to say that, all right? Good. Well, guys, I truly said I love you and I will be talking to you next week on more situations about my life. That one is still coming up about my husband in Kuwait and the shock. All right, guys, I love you. God bless you. Have a wonderful, wonderful weekend. Thank you so much for listening to my story. I truly do appreciate it. All right, bye-bye.